My name's Sandra and together with my partner Lynn, we uh, own and run Limbrick Croft in the Scottish Highlands. We're at about 350 metres above sea level and right next to the Cairngorm Mountains, which you can see right behind me here. It's a, it's a challenging climate to live in and to grow things in, but um, we've always been passionate about the environment and, and food. And so that was the big draw to living closer to the land and providing ourselves with all the food that we realistically could. So five years ago, we moved here and the first thing we did was put in a kitchen garden to provide ourselves with as much outdoor grown food as we could. I think the way we've started gardening was just trying things out. So we definitely wanted to do no dig. We're really into soil health and that, and that kind of thing, which is what we apply across our whole croft as well in our fields. We're constantly building um, organic matter and, and soil health. So we put in five no dig beds with whatever soil we could find in molehills and our own compost. And we added that every year. And after that, it was just a matter of trial and error to figure out what, what wants to live here, what wants to grow and what, what can deal with the, the conditions that we have, which we try and improve on as well. And the challenges are the, the climate and the exposure of where we are. We're very exposed to, to high winds. Just the, the, the short growing seasons as well uh, at this uh, latitude. We, we have growing season that starts the end of May and lasts into September. So everything has to grow really fast and ripen fast to be able to harvest before winter starts in October, November. The aim was to, to see how, how much we could grow realistically and year on year we've seen that improve. And I think in part it's due to our experience where we, we're beginning to realise what actually wants to grow here. And also soil health, I think that's, that's with the soil just improving every year, our yields increasing. At the minute, we think we probably cover about 70% of our vegetables year round. I'm not sure how much we can improve on that with what we've got here. Um, we have put in a poly tunnel um, to, to try and bring it up to as close to 100 as we can for vegetables. It's realising just what we personally will need a lot of throughout the winter as well and to try and figure out what will actually survive the winter even under thick snow cover and ice. <laughs> I think there's, there's a deep connection that you, you develop with the land that you live on and being able to grow your own food and then be able to nourish yourself with that afterwards. It's something that's, it's, it's something that goes very deep. So on a soul, spiritual level, you, you've, you've definitely got that. And then on a physical level, it's, it's the, the high nutrient from your own food grown like this. I think our bodies have started to adapt to that and we do realize that when we eat food from elsewhere, our body tells us there's nutrients missing. So this is very filling, nourishing food. There's no going back afterwards anymore. We definitely try to disturb the soil structure as little as possible. So um, anything that gets harvested, gets harvested above ground. Uh, the roots can, can die and, and nourish the, the soil later on. Uh, anything that gets pulled gets pulled very carefully, uh, root crops. Um, and then we add our own um, compost every year, a thin layer. And we've just noticed how the, the soil is now really nice and crumbly. It's very rich. It's got a lot of life in it. We have fungi popping up. So there's obviously mycelium growing throughout, which is a good sign as well. It's just a philosophy that we think sits right and we're starting to see the benefits of it too. The biggest surprise from our kitchen garden is probably the fact that we've had a success with it. When we first moved here, what was behind me was a lawn and there was a stock fence and the weather would come in and just everything got, you know, beaten by the wind and it was quite bleak looking when we arrived that spring because well spring doesn't start until May as I said we arrived in March so I thought I'm not sure anything will grow here. I'd only ever grown vegetables in Switzerland. I had a wee vegetable garden there south facing above a lake, palm trees growing everywhere. I didn't have to do much things just grew uh, whereas here it's a bit of a fight to get things to survive and, and not want to die. So it was putting in enough shelter and to be honest, 
is a massive surprise that we can cover about 70% of our food from here. Uh, I never expected that. So I, I wouldn't have any scientific data to prove it, but we do think since applying nettle tea to the vegetables every few weeks, we've seen a, a massive improvement in, in the crops, the, just the health and the yields as well. So it was last year that we first started doing that and, and everything just went crazy. It could also do with the improving soil, but I think nettle tea and just an extra boost of natural nutrients for the plants to take on if they need it is definitely the way to go. The polycrub was always the, the, the missing piece of the puzzle to, to allow us to grow everything that either couldn't deal with the exposure up here or just needed a slightly friendlier climate to grow in. So we had to source a, a polytunnel that was going to be able to withstand the storms that we get up here and sustain high winds too. So we found one that's built on Shetland uh, called polycrub. So it, we, we built it last September. It, had to deal with some severe storms last winter it never budged and so this is our first growing season with the polycrub and I wasn't sure how it was going to do with the soil having to set first we didn't have much time and also my inexperience growing in an enclosed space a different kind of climate and everything but to be honest we've been blown away it is like a, a mini jungle already and we're hoping that we'll be able to produce as much food from in there as possible it will be an ongoing learning curve obviously but it's already been worthwhile. The shelter that we've provided for our veg garden is about stock fence height, so it was quite clear that we had to grow everything that wouldn't succeed that height. It would just get windblown otherwise. The vegetable varieties that I choose are ones that don't grow particularly high, so we keep the peas quite low on like pyramid stands so they kind of lean into each other and kind of hold on to each other. And anything that grows tall we have to stake, so things like broad beans and Brussels sprouts, uh, anything that doesn't like being whipped about and having that kind of so, um, root disturbance. But keeping everything as low as possible. The kale, we've got a, a dwarfing variety as well. And just adapt to the conditions. There's, there's plenty that you can grow, just choose wisely. I love having flowers everywhere. I, I like native flowers, wild flowers, and the benefits they bring. So when we put in our first five beds, we actually created a wildflower strip around the outside of the veg garden and uh, sowed it with wildflowers, perennials and annuals, just hoping that they would just keep going and keep flowering every year. And it's paid off because we see so many pollinators coming in. We have our own beehives, so obviously that's a benefit for our bees, but also all the, the native pollinators like bumblebees and hoverflies and that kind of thing. And then the other hope is as well is to, to bring in predator species that will prey on any kind of beastie that's got it in for our veg. We've had the odd thing being eaten, but we've never had infestations of anything. So I'm hoping that having the, the, the flowers and, and the variety of insects will, will help with that anyone wanting to grow food, go for it, try it. Um, it doesn't have to be a success straight away. Anything, anytime you work in the natural environment, you work with nature, things that grow, it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. So give it a few seasons and every year you observe and you see what worked, what didn't work, you tweak it and, and you will see an improvement and you will be able to grow food. There's absolutely no way you won't grow something so successfully don't be afraid of failures it happens to everyone just enjoy the successes along the way too it's really interesting if you look in the dictionary the word nature does not include the word people so we've effectively defined ourselves out of nature and we want to farm in a way that defines people back into nature in a way in which we're part of a holistic system where we give and we take we don't continually extract and we offer the work that we do as a way of showcasing what's possible and a way of reconnecting people with the land you know reconnecting people with places like this the food that you know that they buy the very kind of land that they walk on I would say that's our ultimate big picture vision for Limbrecht.